So Rutherford, one of the world's greatest experimental physicists, set about designing the apparatus that revealed the structure of the atomic nucleus. With little more than some dry ice, a hot water bottle, a squirt of alcohol and a radioactive source, he was able to visualise with the naked eye things that the most powerful microscopes struggle to detect. Individual subatomic particles. Well, this is the cloud chamber full of supersaturated alcohol vapour. And you see those cloud trails those are uh, helium nuclei, alpha particles, single ones being emitted off the thorium on the end of that welding rod. It was these particle trails that Rutherford watched, hoping to see what happened when atomic nuclei collided. Now, very occasionally, very rarely, they saw something extremely interesting happen. And we have a graphic of that here. So now this is a picture, a film of a real cloud chamber and we've superimposed there a graphic of what Rutherford and his team saw. The reason we haven't shown a real one is because these are extremely rare processes. Rutherford observed over a quarter of a million tracks of helium nuclei passing through the nitrogen and his team only saw eight of these particular collisions. Now, at first sight, it looks unremarkable. There's a helium nucleus coming in, bouncing off a nitrogen nucleus. The interesting thing is what these two outgoing tracks actually are, because they are no longer helium and nitrogen. This one, it turns out, is oxygen. And this one is a single proton, the nucleus of hydrogen. This is an extremely important moment in the history of nuclear physics. It says that nuclei are not indivisible. Elements can be transformed from one type into another. It was known that when some nuclei are split, energy is released. But no one thought it would be possible to harness this energy. Until 1935, when a new element was discovered. And this is the fission, the splitting of uranium-235 into krypton and barium. Now, Uranium-235 is a, a naturally occurring form of uranium, but it has the property that if you hit it with a neutron, then it immediately splits up into krypton and barium, and the mass of those decay products is less than the mass of the initial nucleus, so energy is released. But also, in this reaction, three neutrons are released, and those neutrons can go on to hit further uranium nuclei, which will in turn trigger those to split, releasing more energy and more neutrons, and you get a chain reaction. So this is the principle behind a nuclear bomb.